hole facing downward or some kind of saddle. Right? These are the different options when we're optimizing the function of multiple variables. In particular, if h is positive definite, you're at a local minimum. In fact, this is easy to see. Right? Because what do you have here? Well, you have a product. I'm going to erase our median. Um, right? You have this product that looks like 1 half delta x transpose uh, hessian times delta x. Yeah? And what do we know if this guy is positive definite? This is good uh, midterm review. What do we know about this number? Strictly greater than zero. Yeah, strictly greater than zero. Yeah? So in particular, what this says is if I move away from x0, then what happened to f? It increased. Yeah? And so this is some indicator that if your, your Hessian is positive definite, you're a little new. Right? Because we also know at a critical point that the second term of the sum is equal to 0. Right? Because the gradient is 0. Yeah? So only if the things are definite, you're a local uh, maximum. Right? Now you're both down. If it is indefinite, meaning that one eigenvalue is positive and one eigenvalue is negative, right? you're at a saddle point meaning that you're at neither a minimum nor a maximum. And finally, if h sub f is not invertible, then, well, you're host. <laughs> but in general, it is very uncommon to find a function who up to second order uh, is, 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 is indefinite. So usually what happens when I use state-of-the-art optimization tools and I put in something with a non-invertible Hessian, well, it just gives up. <laughs> okay? Um, obviously, you can keep computing terms in this Taylor series, but kind of enough already. <laughs> In fact, the, uh, the third order term of this Taylor series, right, look, look what happened. The, first, the zeroth order term was a number. The first order term was a vector, right? This, uh, this gradient thing. Second order term was a matrix. What is the third order term? Anybody in vocabulary word of the day? It's called a tensor. And it is a thing that we don't like to play with in math and we can avoid. Yeah? Although, again, uh, people in machine learning that really care about these optimization problems have worked these things out in detail. I was talking to some guys in the natural language processing group that, that deal with these like ginormous tensor systems, and, and this is totally horrifying to me. Okay. Now, there are alternative ways to check if I'm at a, a minimum or maximum. One is to say that my function f is convex. Now, function convex, if, uh, let's say that I'm at, here's one point x, here's another point y. Right? And I'm going to draw a line segment between uh, uh, x and y. Right? So this looks like uh, alpha x plus uh, 1 minus alpha y, for example. Right? So just some sliding point along this line. And if f is smaller at all the points on this line segment than at the endpoints, we call that a convex function. Right? So what does f look like? It looks like that. <laughs> right? Because I can take any two points, draw a line between them, and f has to go underneath it. What's the nice thing about a convex function? Well, everything. In particular, it can have exactly one minimum, and I can find it just by kind of walking downhill. Right? Because what would happen if I had two minima? For example, let's say I have a function like this. Right? Well, now I could draw a line between the two minima, and everything would have to be even smaller than these two values. Right? But that didn't happen because that was increasing. So you actually can only have one minimum for a convex function. So automatically know that if f is convex and you found a critical point, you're just kind of done with your optimization. You don't even have to check it. Same group. Yeah? Similarly, something that's gained a lot of interest in the last uh, five or ten years is the idea of a quasi-convex function, where you say rather than uh, being less than the, either of the endpoints, you're less than the bigger of the two endpoints. And the reason that we care about that is for functions that look like this. Now, it's clear that this function has a unique minimum, right? But it is not convex. Because if I draw the line segment here, it goes above the line segment. Yes? Um, so when you said the convex function is when you have two points that's always less than, is that also true for like, a function with saddle points in the middle? Uh, can a convex function have saddle points? I don't think it can. Um, so, for example, let's say I have a function that looks like this. Um, yeah, so let's say that I, I put one point at the center point and one point at the midpoint. I think because the tangent is horizontal, but it's still decreasing to the minimum, you're going to run into a problem with that. But this isn't a proof. I don't know, there might exist some really funky function that kind of stops and then goes straight down, but I, 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 can't, I can't think of it. Uh, certainly not true for analytic things, right? Things that have two series. Cool. Well, 
What's going to be our first trick for, for minimizing function? Find the easiest thing in the world. Well, we know Newton's method for finding zeros. Well, a critical point is the zero of f prime, right? So we could use a, a Newton's method to find roots of f prime, right? So now instead of f over f prime, we have f prime over f double prime, and everything else is the same, convergence is the same, life is good. And we can use that multivariable formulation if you want. Yeah? Now, one question, what would you need? So you could also run the secant method on f prime, but it's a little bit weird, right? So the secant method would help me avoid having to evaluate f double prime, but I'd still have to evaluate f single prime, right? Because I'm trying to find f, uh, roots of f prime. Does that make sense? So usually we don't use the secant method uh, to, to find minima because somehow you're already having to differentiate x once, you might as well do it twice. But what you could do is do something sort of similar to the secant method, but we call it successive parabolic interpolation. And the idea here is that you keep track of the last two data, or three data points, rather. Right? So let's say that I'm, I'm trying to minimize some function, right? and my last three iterates are like here, here, and here. Right, one thing I could do, and I'm going to do this really poorly, here is uh, draw a parabola through those three points, right, just my last three iterates. And now we know the minimum for a parabola, right? It's easy to find a vertex. So that's going to be our next guess of where you go. It's called successive parabolic interpolation. It turns out that, that a convergence of the strategy is, uh, is good, but very, very difficult to prove and analyze, so we don't worry about it a whole lot in this class. That's really because it's not the most effective strategy out there. But if you're looking for a way to extend secant, there it is. Um, right, so I guess we need to stop there for the day. Um, but the, the question that I'm going to leave you with for the end of class, and I will answer on Monday, is uh, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit, right? If we're trying to parallel our, our discussion of root finding and minimization, right? The first thing I gave you was uh, this bisection algorithm, which is sort of the easiest possible thing. Right, but then for minimization, we jumped all the way to like a differential function f and, 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 and using Newton's method. And as we know, Newton's method has its drawbacks, namely it doesn't have to converge all the time. Right? So a reasonable question you can and should ask is, how could I imitate bisection for a minimization problem? This is not an obvious question. So we're going to provide one potential answer on Wednesday, uh, and maybe I'll leave you with this uh, to think about rather than hitting spacebar one more time uh, uh, during this week. Cool? So again, your midterm is on Monday. You get one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Uh, study the concepts. Make sure, you know, if you do this extra credit assignment, I think it actually could help because it's going to make sure you know the nitty gritty details of all these algorithms. If you don't do it, then, then so be it. It's optional. Up to you. Whatever. Um, I'll try to have at least one extra office hours. Uh, I'll announce that the next day or two. If I forget, let me know, and I will post. Uh, it happens. Uh, some of you can find typos, course notes, slides, and things. I'm happy to fix. Cool. Any questions? Nothing. Great. All right. Call it a day. Somebody uh, hit the button on the camera. This one.